In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Pythagorean Theorem in order to solve for a missing side of a right triangle. So the first thing that you really need to notice is that anytime you're given a right triangle, it's going to have this symbol in here that represents a 90 degree angle. If you see that and you see that you're missing a side and it's telling you to find that missing side, and let's say for example it says that this side is missing and so they're calling it X. Then we can go ahead and use the Pythagorean Theorem in order to solve it. Now there are a few things that you have to know in order to use it. And first of all, we gotta be able to tell the difference between the hypotenuse and the legs. So I'm gonna draw a triangle real quick and I'm gonna show you how we can label it. And I recommend that every time you work on a problem, you label it. For instance, the legs of the triangle are on the side that touches this right angle symbol. So here's this right angle symbol. Notice it touches two sides of the triangle. I like to call the one that's over here on the left, um, leg A. And then I say that my leg B is the one on the bottom. Now C is directly across from the right angle. So if you went to that right angle symbol and you drew an arrow pointing across, that'll be your C side, which is the hypotenuse. And it is the longest side of the triangle. Now the reason that makes a difference is you cannot mix up C with A or B in the formula or you'll get it wrong when you try to solve the problem. But A and B really don't matter. As long as one of the sides you got labeled as A and one is labeled as B, it don't matter. You could call the bottom A and the left side B. You'll still get the same answer because they're going to be added. And here's the formula. I'm going to write this down real quick. The formula will be A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So now that we know that, we can go over to this triangle that's missing the value for its hypotenuse, represented by the letter x, the variable x, and we can solve for it. So we're going to solve for x. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write my formula again. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And just looking at it, I'm going to start to label it. So for instance, this 4 over here, that's gonna, I'm going to call this side a, so that's my leg a. And I'm going to write B equals right here. So 3 is going to be my B. And then X, right, that's going to be my C value. So every time that I'm going to solve one of these, I go ahead and define A, B, and C. Right? And that's because if I draw an arrow, C is right over there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and substitute the numbers. So for A, we have a 4. So in place of A, I am going to substitute 4 squared plus my B value, which happens to be 3. So that's 3 squared, and that's equal to c squared, right, which is really our x, because that's what we're trying to find. So at this point, I got two options. I could just add this together with a calculator, but for this example, I'm going to go ahead and do it by hand. 4 squared is just 4 times 4, which gives me 16. And 3 squared is just 3 times 3, which gives me 9. And this is all equal to c squared. Now if I add 16 plus 9, that's going to give me 25. Now when you get to this point where you have a number on the left and you have c squared on the right, you now have to go ahead and get rid of this square symbol. Because notice up here we're looking for a linear measurement. We're just looking for x or we're just looking for c. So we're looking for the length of that line. So we need to unsquare this value, and the way you unsquare something is by taking the square root of it. So I am going to take the square root of both sides. When I do it on the right side, all it does is eliminate the little 2 on the C, and it just becomes C. And on the left side, if you know by memory your perfect squares, you would know what this answer is, right? And you can just write that value here. But if you don't, you don't have that memorized, you can just get your calculator. And what you're going to do is you're going to hit the second button. And then after second, you're going to hit the little x with the 2 on it, the x squared. And when you hit that, you're going to see this symbol pop up, which is a radical, just like I wrote right there. And then you're going to put 25 in there and let it evaluate it for you. And notice it says that the square root of 25 is simply 5. So on this side over here, I'm going to write c is equal to 5. And then that would be my answer. In other words, x is equal to 5. 